you tuned into a great sister to sister today. We have a question that says, why are some people healed and some people are not? Oh, good question. What about this? What will heaven be like? Oh, I'll be there. Oh, I hope I'm there too. Partay. Well, welcome to Sister to Sister. We are so glad you joined us. We are five women of God, and we bring answers to the questions sometimes that you send to us from the Word of God and from our hearts. And this question, ugh, it's a tough one. See what you think. Oh, Corey, I'm coming to you. Wait till you hear this one. Why are some people healed and some people are not? Well, um. I'm sure everybody will come from it from a different perspective. Um, my perspective is that sometimes it's because um, God is keeping us from something worse. You're not healed mm -hmm. because you're being kept from something worse. Mm -hmm. And I have a personal testimony from that. I'm wearing my um, Stroke Survivor t-shirt today. Um, this year, our family went through something really difficult. My sister, who isn't even 40 yet, mm -hmm. actually had a stroke. Um, and she was having horrible, horrible headaches. And we were praying her through that, mm -hmm. asking for healing for that. And the Lord did not heal her of those headaches. And the reason is because she ended up finding out she had an aneurysm. Mm -hmm. And had the Lord healed her of those headaches, she likely would have died from that aneurysm. And they discovered through those headaches they discovered the aneurysm. She went and had brain surgery. Um, and, you know, she ended up having a stroke through all of this, but she's, you know, going to make a full, likely going to make a full recovery oh, from likely. it. Likely, you know, she yeah. is going to make yeah. a full I mean, she recovery. is, That's she's right. made That's tremendous right. strides That's and she's wonderful, doing beautiful. wonderful. Um, love you, Leah. Yes. And mm. she's doing great. And, um, you know, we just look back and every time I, think about what could have happened. You know, I just I get, I get choked up about it, but you know, you just look back and you don't know what you don't right, know, right, right, you know, right, but right. Um, you know, you just, when you're in it, it's like, Lord, why are you not, you know, Paul asked mm -hmm. three times, take my thorn in the flesh yes, right, away. Right, and we don't know right, if that was physical good, or not, but you know, you look back and you're like, okay, now I see the picture, right, yeah, you know? Yeah. Wow. Corey, I love that because the truth of the matter is we should not waste time trying to create a doctrine for what we don't understand mm -hmm. because the yes. truth of the matter is I've experienced both. I, I know what it is to pray and I know what it is to be healed. I know what it is to right. pray for somebody to get healed. I know what it is to mm -hmm. lay hands on somebody and see them healed. I know what it is to mm -hmm. engage in warfare and, and fight for their healing via cl claiming the sure. promises of God. Right. I also know to have done all of that and had the word of the Lord spoken over them through a prophet and then watch them go home to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it leaves you in a state of confusion, right. pain. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I think yes. that we as believers have got to learn to do and practice is to be transparent. I don't need, it's, I don't get points taken off of my faith or Christianity card because I'm in a struggle or because something happened that shook me. You know, mm -hmm. um, I remember, mm -hmm. you know, I had a, a, a godson and, and, and another uh, dear uh, sister in the Lord who had a daughter that were battling um, some illnesses. And we as a church stood mm -hmm. and believed. And what happened is when what we were believing for didn't manifest, it shook the whole church. Mm -hmm but no one addressed it. It just like kind of let's not talk about it, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I just think that for me, when I went through those difficult times and I had a situation with my mother, um, and when I went through that, I had to step back, erect an altar, give that to God as right. best I could. Cause for, and I think I've shared this before, there were years, there were time went by, past where I would not pray for certain things. Um, because of what had happened, it kind of just shook me wow. to my core. So I think we, 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 have, we have to be watchful. I believe in the f faith teaching. Right. I believe in, you know, I believe in all of that. But when it doesn't happen, 
you are no right. less a Christian and God is no less a God. We can't his judge God. each other. We can't judge each other this on scripture, our faith. This scripture, I mean, right. this question is, mm -hmm. is really a setup, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. how do we know? We're not the all eternal ones, you know, you know, why are some people healed and others not? We believe in the healing power of God. It is by his stripes that we are here. He was wounded for our transgressions. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that healeth thee. And we also had, you know, my, my father-in-law went through cancer and he passed away. And we were all, he was praying, he was believing. And then he got tired and then he got weary. And then we don't know all the details of what was happening in him, or, but we know this, that he was laying on his bed and he was seeing angels yes, come on. and he was seeing heaven and eternity. And I'm, I'm just telling you, if, if we had one glimpse of eternity in heaven, we might but I, choose. But I still think this is, I mean, I know everything that we're saying, mm -hmm. but I just go to the lady with the issue of blood. All she wanted to do was touch his garment. Just let me get to Jesus. And he turned. Who touched me? So I stand on God's healing until he doesn't. But and then I, I don't want to be confused, I but I stand on it. the question is, does God not heal? heal. The right. question he is, heals. why he does, yeah, right. how come right. sometimes get it, it some happens and sometimes it doesn't? Right, but I want to be the lady with the blood. Yeah, what do you got? You know, I got to say this about prayer. You know, Matthew 15 and maybe what is it, 18 says, whatever you bind on earth right. shall have been bound already in heaven. Sometimes mm, we pray so much for the healing that we forget to ask God, thy will be done. Mm. What is your will, God? Now we don't pray people yeah. die because no, God right, says, oh, right, right. we have hope right. till the end. When my father <laughs> passed, we had hope till the end. If anybody should be saved, you know, somebody witnessing and healing and doing all sorts of things in, in the Lord's name and loving and honoring God. But sometimes we forget to pray, God, what is your will before I start mm. praying and claiming your scripture? So I, I, just a caution, Jesus said, thy will be done. He asked the mm -hmm. cup to pass from him. Right. Jesus even yeah, asked, right. Father, yeah, do I really so need so to go yeah. through this? And what did God's answer? You know, he was betrayed. He was taken. He was arrested. He was convicted for doing nothing wrong, not breaking the law. So thy will be done. Yep. You know, yep, it's Russ, good. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just, I love that perspective. But I'm thinking of like some of the believers who will feel like, well, you know, the will of God is healing. The will of God is, you know, um, and I, I, I find that sometimes as we talked yesterday about that pendulum, we go too far to the other end. Um, it just, it throws us out of balance, you know, mm -hmm. because there is such a thing. I, I, I just prayed for somebody recently about a comment against premature death and there, you know, Ooh. God came and, and, and ministered mm -hmm. healing in, in his goodness. But uh, mm -hmm. I think, I, I, I was just wondering your thoughts on that. On what, on, on what God says about when, healing? When, when people, for that group of people that maybe feel like, yeah, but you know, you're telling me to pray the will of God, but the will of God is that I am healed. It, it isn't always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, mm -hmm. There's a healing, there's an ultimate healing when it's time, our work is done mm -hmm. and it's time mm -hmm. to go home. Mm -hmm. Or we have to go through sometimes suffering. Mm -hmm. And I know people don't believe God, oh, how could he let me suffer? Mm -hmm. He's a good God. He let Paul suffer. He let Peter hang upside down on the cross. There is, I don't understand as Amy said, all the glory of yeah. God. Mm -hmm. People got their heads chopped off, mm -hmm. John the Baptist mm -hmm. and others saw it in two, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they kept pursuing God no matter what difficulty yeah. they went through. Their faith wasn't based on what's God gonna do for me, yeah. but what right. am I in this mm -hmm. suffering going to do for God's glory? Right, Amen. and Thank speaking you. of God's good. glory, mm -hmm. this question from you, mm -hmm goes like this. What do you think heaven will be like? Interesting, right? What do you do if you're afraid of dying? Good follow-up. 
pastor. Mm -hmm. Man, well, what will heaven be like? I, I was just rereading Revelations 21, which, oh my gosh, the description of heaven. I mean, you have to read it today because Revelation we're, 21. we're probably pretty close to the rapture. We're, I mean, according to world events, global events, it, I mean, the timing of Israel and things that are happening there, but heaven is eternal. It's beautiful. It's the presence of God. It's beyond description. I wrote down it is. It's built for us individually. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. I mean, there's a place prepared for us. We're going to have crowns. We're going to be laying them at the feet of Jesus. We're going to be worshiping. Heaven's going to be perfect. In heaven, there will not be bills. There will not be rent due. There will not be utilities. There will not be grass that I've cut. There will be a new body. A glorified body. I mean, heaven is, we have so much to look for. That's why you've got to be at peace with God. For those that are, are afraid of that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the eternal eternity, they're afraid. I mean, I have a good friend of mine. It's a place where I go shop. And finally, he, he said to me, he goes, I just want you to know, I know you're a pastor and I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I don't believe in an afterlife. And I went, I go, I can't imagine eternity without you. Right. And I said Aww. this, I said, if you're right and I'm wrong, I've got nothing to lose. But if I'm right and you're wrong, you've got everything to lose. Good. And I said, just That's pray great. about and just ask God if he's real, will he reveal Jesus, will you reveal yourself to me if you're real? That's wow. so good. That, that makes awesome. me want to cry. Yeah, I got tears. Wow. <laughs> Anybody else? Heaven, what did we tell our friends? Afraid to die. Just on the, the afraid to die part, like I, I think it's normal though to be afraid of how you're going to die. Like I, I think, um, you know, there, that's a normal fear to have. So, you know, you know, I don't want to like judge people that are like, I'm afraid like I might die in a car accident or whatever. That's a normal fear to have. But mm -hmm. if you're truly afraid of the afterlife and what's going to happen after you're going to die, you need to examine your relationship with God and if you have one. Mm -hmm. And I love what you just said. I'm going to mm -hmm. use that, girl. Yeah. 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 You're talking about fear. I have, um, well, I have a husband. He's wonderful. But I pray over him Psalm 112. And, it, yeah. and part of it, it oh, says, he will not be afraid of bad news mm -hmm. because he trusts the Savior. So what we're saying, I'm afraid of dying in a car accident. I'm afraid. Trust the Savior. That's what I got. What do you have? Well, re read Revelations. It's replete with the descriptions of, of heaven. heaven. Mm -hmm. Streets of gold. Pearl, you know, they say the pearly. There is gold. There is pearl. There is uh, streams. There are animals. Thank right, you, everybody. Right, right. Dogs, <laughs> all dogs go to yeah, heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, good, sister. Good, good. Uh, so it can give you some insight, but remember about the fear of death. When uh, Jesus told Peter he's going to die the way he's going to die, it's not going to be easy, Peter. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, What about John? He said, Don't worry about John. Right, right. You know, John died a different. Jesus actually kind of forewarned him. Life, Peter, is not going to be easy. It's going to be glory-filled. Glory Peter walked and people yeah. were healed in his right, shadow. Right, right, right. Yet right. the Lord took him and Peter asked, I want to be crucified upside down. I don't deserve to die like my Savior did. So what brings Peter from denying Christ to being so in love with him? It was Christ himself. Yes. It was being filled with the Holy yes. Spirit yes. that allows us yes. to go through things that we in our flesh cannot, That's right. cannot go through. So good. And speaking of the Holy Spirit, I have a question. I'm going to come to you and I have time for you to tell me. I hear people talk about being led by the Spirit, but I don't know what they mean. Yeah, I, I totally get that because, you know, spiritual, as you often hear me say, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And right. so yeah. when you talk about how to walk after the spirit, I have to learn how to connect and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Interesting enough, you know, God in all of his wisdom in Galatians 3, I believe it's verses 24 four through 25 talks about something called, uh, if I'm pronouncing it read, right, a pedagogue. And a pedagogue was the person who is responsible for teaching the and training the king's children, their heirs, mm -hmm. how, how mm -hmm. to uh, 
get prepared for the throne, to get prepared to reign, um, to, to know the king and all, all of his ways. And, you know, to the Jews, the law was the pedagogue. But when Christ came on the scene, our faith was that. Right. So when Christ went off the scene, then what yeah. happens is he gives us what? The Holy Spirit, who is known as what? Our teacher, our comforter. And, you know, Holy Spirit, for me to be led by the Spirit meant I needed to sweetly surrender to the Holy Spirit. And how did I do that? By enrolling in the school of the Holy Spirit. And when you enroll in the school of the Holy Spirit, that scripture tends to come to life about, you know, this flesh has to die daily. You know what I mean, Corey? Like Flo has her way of doing things. Flo has her reasoning. She has her rationale. She has all of that. But when I submit to mm -hmm. the will of God, become mm -hmm. Christ-centered, then the Holy Spirit is able to guide me, to That's teach right. me. That's why it is so important as believers that we have a teachable and obedient spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. So unless I can submit and be taught and obey, because knowledge puffeth up. There are people who can quote scripture better than any of us sitting at this table mm -hmm. who understand, um, you know, mm -hmm. who understand the scriptures, the, the, the ancientness of it all and, and some of the mysticism right, of it right, better right. Than, than we do. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. But we have to, I know we're out of time, but, yep. the, but the truth of the matter is, is we have to, the bottom line is being able to be taught, being submitted and allowing the Holy Spirit to disciple us. Right, the key, the key was surrender. Mm -hmm. And I surrender right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to break, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Sister to Sister. The conversation continues. The Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, was so good. But this one, you wrote to us, thanks a lot, because it's about the, it's, oh, it's not the Proverbs 31 woman. Oh, wait, listen to this one. The Bible says, <laughs> man, I'm sorry, I think about the proverb. The, the Proverbs. Okay. She's, she's just writing her own questions. Yeah, well. Oh, wow, wow. On the okay, the Bible says man finds favor when he finds a wife. And I'm thinking about this perfect wife, but no, it's Proverbs 18, 22. So go look it up. What does that mean? Corey, just tell me. I think it's pretty clear what this means. Come on. It answers the age old question. It tells us women are better than men. <laughs> okay. We just got the answer from the Bible, people. It does not say women find favor when she finds a good husband. It says man <laughs> finds favor when he finds a wife. Okay? Yeah. It doesn't even say a good wife. It just uh -huh. says a wife. Okay? So it means women are the good stuff. Yeah. People, I think all the single ladies should just put this on their Tinder accounts. Put this verse right on there, right up front. Because these men need to stop dragging their feet and just find a wife because that's the good stuff, okay? Because you just found the good stuff when you find There's a wife. A, oh. There is a TikTok video that's trending with an older gentleman who's a, a minister and he's giving his spiel while he's looking for a good wife, you know, because he needs favor with the Lord. <laughs> and it's really, it's so cute and funny. That's, that's why it's trending. But you know, when I think about like the man who is crowned and created with dignity and honor and glory. It's not like he's without the favor of God without a woman. I mean, he is favored and he's a man, he's a son of God. Right. I right. mean, he's got, he's an heir. But the wife adds this beauty and this grace and this elegance and makes it softer and more applicable oh, and okay. and listen <laughs> we get it I don't know it, about listen that, it's like but... double favor it's like double grace All right, so well, we're I'm going to the next question though well, because, let me, let me, let well me this next question here. is really good yes yeah, mm -hmm. so is this one <laughs> the acceptance 
and <laughs> the you know, because I, I think just a, a real quick a piece that I just want to give. But, you know, t you know, dovetailing off the pastor because it's, it's true. When we think of favor, we have to think of, of what it means, and it talks about acceptance, mm -hmm. approval, and pleasure. And I believe it pleasures the heart of God when a man finds a good thing. Yeah. Because all good gifts are given to us by mm -hmm. whom? God. And so when you, when a man finds that good thing, I believe God's heart is, 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 is pleased. Um, an excellent wife is a crown to her husband. That's mm -hmm. what the scripture tells yeah. us, right? Mm -hmm. And so he is of a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. you know? So the favor of God begins to come on that man in a way that, you know, here's the woman, here's the wife of your youth. And what does she do? She supports you. Her very presence speaks peace to you. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she meets your desires. So I believe it's pleasing Big to time. daddy. All right, Big I'm going to the next question because it really pertains to all of you, mm -hmm. married or not married. Mm -hmm. um, this one is really good. Life is hitting me hard and my emotions are all over the place. I know when it's happening, but I don't have the ability to stop it. And I have a meltdown. Come on, Roxy, oh, what do we man. tell this hey, person? Hey, we've all been there, right? Yeah, well, yeah. lots of people have mm -hmm. meltdowns. You know, so. Psalm 27 says, wait on the Lord to renew your strength. That doesn't mean just sit back till he does something. Do what he tells you to do. If it's pray, if it's talk to somebody else. And I see what God does when he's bringing somebody back in with their emotions. Like Job, he asks them the questions. Mm -hmm. well, where were you, Job, when I created everything? Where were you, Job, when the uh, Leviathan was in the sea and the mountains were created? God, Job got a new perspective on who God was and is in light of eternity and in light of his creation. So we need to step back sometimes and remember who God is and accept his rebuke. Right. I think mm, lots of good. people have these emotional days. Corey, what do you think? Okay, but I think you do need to have just a good cry sesh sometimes. Mm. Like, I, I think you just need to make sure it's in an appropriate time and a, appropriate place and appropriate people. Like, you know, it's not appropriate, like, you know, when you're at work mm -hmm. or when you're driving down the highway, like, it's... <laughs> I messed that up, did I? <laughs> I've seen people cry in their Pull car, over. and I want to stop. Uh, okay, but like, but, right. but it's right. if it's with safe people and right. trusted people, you know, with a counselor or with your spouse, you know, it, it's okay to have those emotional times. It's when it's becoming too frequent or you're not, you know, having the outlets that you need to have. If you're stuffing everything down, uh, yeah, Kathy. <laughs> But I, 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 I don't, I'm not going to have a meltdown okay, okay. because I trust the one. So what do you do? So the woman that writes this, she's having a meltdown. She's calling our, our station. You, you need, what do they do? You need to talk to trusted people that give you good advice and wisdom so that you can work out what those, where that's coming from. Because it is coming from somewhere that you need to deal with. Right. My yeah. mind goes right to a place when I read this and I can just picture this season of my life where everything was just coming at all sides. Right. And I had to just figure out what what works for me to either calm down or, I mean, it was a mixture of vitamins and exercise class with calming mm, music good. and yeah. good stretching, good yeah. walking, yeah. Yeah. historical yeah. fiction, and talking to a good friend. Yes. So it's like God will give you a way out. Right, but I thank you for the question. I thank you because I know that there's many of you out there and you're suffering and you say, what would the sisters think, what would God say? What should I do? So we hope we gave you some good suggestions today. Stay right there. We're going to wrap this up. Wow, talk about emotions. You're going to like this story. But I'm going to first close with Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. Well, controlling ourselves may begin with accepting the rebuke of others. 
preceding these photos you're going about to see of my daughter's graduation, I was in full vent. There's my mom. I always talk about her. God bless her. I was in full vent, according to the scripture. Fussing, complaining, controlling. And then at this table, my daughter turns to me and sweetly says, Mom, I feel like I'm in a circus and you're the ringmaster. Whoa. Wow, it hit me. I gasped. I thought about it. I repented. I accepted it. And I realized life is not a circus. Life is not my show that I could vent all of my emotions. Life is a celebration of who God is. And we must in first invite him to the table, accept his direction, and sometimes accept his rebuke when we jump into that circus ring. Well, you know, it's funny because sometimes, many times, I feel like a ringmaster <laughs> around the sisters. So Roxanne was a ringmaster, I'm a ringmaster, and you witness it all. Here's the scripture that we love to end with, and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. And I also say, you see, these girls make me a much better Kathy. See you next time. We are Sister to Sister.